Hey folks, and welcome to Tinkercad for 3D Printing 2021. I am Technivorous, and in this series I'm going to show you from the beginning, step by step, how to use Tinkercad to create your own 3D printed objects. Stay tuned, there's a lot to see, and I've got plenty of these videos coming at you, so don't forget to subscribe. Hey folks, Technivorous here. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but stick around, because today we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting stuff I don't think you're going to want to miss. Hello folks and welcome to Tinkercad for 3D Printing 2021. This is part one. We're going to go over some of the basics today and some of the things we're going to talk about include the shapes over here, the navigation of rotating the view, and some of the other basic items. So the first thing we're going to touch on is moving an item. In order to do that we have to drag one in. So our shapes box is over here and in here there are a bunch of random shape, well not random, um, basically any shape you can think of that is a basic shape is going to be in here and you can also select a bunch of other options for parts that you can select to drag in but we're gonna stick with these for now and skipping out these first top two which are actually holes that we'll touch on in a minute let's go ahead and drag in a box so all you need to do is left click and drag and drop and the highlighted area there is where the box is going to appear. Once that is done we may want to adjust its placement a little bit which we can do by dragging it around or we can use our keyboard to move it. Fine nudges, now this is going to move it along the snap grid in fine increments. We'll touch on that a little bit more in a moment as well but for now just know that the arrow keys will move the object that you want to place. The next thing we're going to touch on is some basic navigation. So you see up here in the top left we have this navigation cube and if I click on front it'll put me in a front view and if I click it with the left mouse button and drag it around I can move around the workspace. It also exposes other sides of the cube that I can then click on and find myself directly facing those. I don't know why I didn't go to the bottom there. There we go. Um, and you can also get in here and grab these corner angles if there's a specific angle you want to see your object from. Uh, that's great using the left mouse button dragging this around but you can also click anywhere on the scene with your right mouse button and do the same thing. Now the only thing about dragging with your right mouse button is you can't snap to those faces with your right mouse button. You have to use the cube for that. So a uh, very handy tool. The other one is the zoom function and that's going to be done by scrolling your mouse wheel. Now you can also use these buttons over here and there is a home button that will return you to the original view that you started with. So you can zoom in and out, things like that. Um, but I tend to use the mouse wheel, you get a lot finer increments instead of a snap like you do from the buttons where it's a, a set distance. So that is good for adjusting what I am looking at and where I need to be positioned. So let's talk a little bit more about these two shapes we skipped over here. As you'll recall I mentioned that they're holes and holes are pretty interesting because they are exactly what they sound like. So I can take this and put it right in the middle of this this cube here. I'm gonna fine tune the placement with my arrow keys and as you can see it's pretty well centered there uh, and then the cool thing about Tinkercad and its functionality is if I now shift and select the solid object and hit this button up here which is known as the group button or press control G it will combine them into one object now it has taken that hole out of the center of my cube and I do have a uh, it, it's slightly breaching the side here so it looks like it's making four triangular shaped models with arcs in the middle um, that is just a side effect of not scaling it down I can control Z and go back and then if I select this guy here I can go ahead and reposition it say we just want to take a chunk out of the corner here we'll do that hit group again and then you see this is now one object I can move it around now the interesting thing about holes is yes you have these two primitive square or excuse me box hole and cylinders holes here um, but all objects can be made into holes so if I drag a cylinder into here again now this is a solid one and I place it right here 
I can combine both of these objects by shift selecting them and make one object or I can decide to take this object and turn it into a hole now it becomes transparent and you can see that it's going to remove it from the other object so now if I shift and select them and hit the group button I end up with this object now remember this was a single object so it is going to move together even though it is two pieces so keep that in mind when using holes and you don't want loose scraps of pieces over here that aren't aren't actually part of your model or anything I could go ahead and just remove that with another hole actually if I wanted to by shift selecting and grouping again so this is the main functionality of Tinkercad and how you're going to create and uh, and manipulate objects so this is a very very handy and a good thing to know one of the other things that I wanted to point out was the basic shapes up here um, if you do go into any of them let's say we do text and numbers and we grab an A uh, like I said you can turn any object into a hole so you can simply click the solid object you're dragging in over here and make it a hole and that goes for the basic shapes as well. If I drag in a half sphere, I can also make that a hole. I can make it solid again simply by clicking solid. And this is a very fluid way of navigating and creating and manipulating objects. So that's going to be it for this first video. We're going to cover some more of the basics, including scaling, copying and pasting, and the snap grid and work planes in the next video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Leave a like on this video if you'd like to see more Tinkercad videos. And we will see you in the next one. Stick around guys, I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here. And if you haven't already, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Make sure that you smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one. Technivorous out. This is Tinkercad for 3D Printing 2021, and I am Technivorous. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this video was helpful to you, and stick around. We'll see you in the next one.